Welcome back to the passenger seat, everybody. Coming up in this episode, I get taken out by a killer butterfly, and we put the landy pedal towards the metal, which out here means getting into third gear occasionally. As we try to head back towards the small town of Apua to stock up with desert life essentials and check in with how the world is doing regarding you know what. But as ever, a few interesting things get in our way. If you've missed the earlier episodes, it's April 2020, and I've run away like a rebellious teenager and ended up out here in the very northwest of Namibia. We pick up the story in a closed campsite south of Red Drum, having smashed our way through a very rocky mountain pass the day before, only to then have to work all night to fix a bad coolant leak, a result from the extreme heat and track conditions. Well, oh. <laughs> she works. Uh, so that's the main thing. Uh... All right, well, had a good sleep, uh, nice and quiet, apart from the very obedient and loyal guard dog who slept next to the Land Rover all night. But yeah, good night's sleep, nice and quiet, um, apart from the dog barking at mysterious things in the dark a couple of times. Um, so just packing up, getting organised. Yeah, so let's see, anything leak overnight? All done, uh, bled the radiator, properly took the radiator cap off and everything, got a few more litres in and uh, we'll drive five or ten let the temperature get up a little bit check it again check the hoses and nurse it through to a pool well just check everything's all right so we're going to pop through some back roads some tracks uh near Ar arapumbe arapembe uh, sorry i always get these names mixed up uh and into opuo and i'm told there's no checkpoint i'm told it's just quiet and calm and uh, I can go to the supermarket and so forth. The trouble will be, where can I stay? Uh, that's very much a centre of this region, so I can't sort of just bush camp 20 kilometres outside of it. Um, and if the police are telling this place to close, I'm guessing they've told everything to close. So yeah, we'll uh, hit road as soon as we can and uh, get to Opuwa. It's pronounced Opua, mate. Opua. The way it is spelt on maps is quite different to its pronunciation, which kept confusing me. Anyway, that's where we are heading. Our chosen route is along the D3707, which is a long, very minor road that follows the river valleys in between the gnarly Rocky Mountain ranges. It should be a very interesting drive, but as you may have noticed, we first have a wide open area of sandy plains to navigate, a rare smooth driving treat out here, so a great chance to have a bit of a gentle hoon and test out the freshly fixed coolant system before we hit the Rocky Mountains afterwards. I just noticed the temperature was shooting up uh, for something astronomical. So something's screwed, eh? Let's have a look. Let's just check the temperature. Oh yeah, temperature seems alright. I forgot to turn the heater on when I bled the radiator, uh, so uh, believe it or not, uh, in this gorgeous setting, I'm running the heater and the Land Rover to, uh, to get it to get rid of all the air bubbles. Anyway, uh, not a bad place though, pretty beautiful. The broken glass of course, because we like that. Nice tree. Thankfully, no great drama in the end. The temperature gauge had been swinging all over the place, caused by some remaining air pockets in the cooling system, a bit of driving with the heater on, and the system bleeds itself. So back to enjoying this lovely smooth sandy plain in the magical glow of the rising sun. What a great place to wake up to. Lovely little moments like this can make all the effort of seeking solitude and adventure 
seem worthwhile. A small pocket of beauty is surprisingly energizing and motivating. Can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey, darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out, we can leave this city. Let's drive to the open air. Yeah, the countryside is so pretty. Breaking open the camera cleaning, cleaning kit. It's uh, been a little while since most of the lenses have had a, a proper clean. And so hopefully we can uh, use it to good effect now by really appreciating some good rock over there. <laughs> Brilliantly, we've got two uh, right next to each other, which are quite different. And uh, I'm sure you're only following my channel for the rock appreciation. <laughs> too right, mate. Who in their right mind doesn't appreciate a good bit of rock? At the risk of coming across as a bloke's in a bit mad from the heat and solitude, it is one of the nice things about a technology-free lifestyle out in the boondocks, that most of life's distractions just naturally melt away, and you concentrate more on living the moment you're in, and appreciating your actual surroundings, however subtle or small the beauty might be. For me, it's always a bit of a disappointment to come in from a long stint in the bush, and find out that not only the world hasn't missed me, but it still exists, so I'll have to suddenly jolt back into dealing with it and stop focusing on the beauty I was able to see when not dealing with the irrelevancies we've filled our modern world with. Yeah, as I said, a bit too much heat and solitude, eh? Dangerous thoughts. Ah, come on, fit in the, fit in the mirror without me in it. <laughs> Almost. There we go, two mountains for the price of one. This is the junction of our bush track and the official road of the D3707, which seems to have had an upgrade since the last time I drove it. It was nicely graded and even had a road sign or two, a real rarity out here. It's usually nice to stop at each little milestone, switch off the noisy engine, stretch the legs and, increasingly the spine, and take in a few of the surroundings. I always think it's such a shame when you're on a time limit and just have to keep blasting through and you can never stop and notice the small things. In this case, it was equally nice to continue down the surprisingly smooth road without too many corrugations for a great change. What a pleasure to drive along with the windows down, the subtle smells of a desert wafting in, the equally subtle differences of a desert scenery stimulating your eyes in the rising sunshine. The rebellious teenager in me still can't understand why this isn't normal everyday life. What could be nicer than third gear in the landy on a desert track in Africa? Your body pumping full of vitamin D from a life outside in the sun? Your mind enjoying the freedom of the open road with endless possibilities ahead? Oh, it's a great road, they've uh, improved it a lot, obviously had a grader over it and smoothed it all out. It used to be much, much worse than this. Uh, it's bumpy and rocky, but uh, you know, you can make good progress, you're not changing gears, you're not stopping and starting all the time, you can actually drive. There we go, 
Dobrze to zrobić. <grystanie> to przyjmować. Well, the road maintenance doesn't include mountain passes, obviously. Uh, so we've got this obstacle to get past, but at least it's not raining. Um, I think this is the old road here. Looks like it's just washed away. And so everyone's been going up this track, which looks all right at the top. But uh, just got a bit of a little bit of come and check this, just to see what it's actually like. It's okay, it's just this bit here looked a bit awful. I think it's no great drama in the landy. So let's give it a go. I was actually starting to relax and enjoy the day. The temperature was sitting nicely on about 95. <laughs> No great dramas, a bit of bang, bang, bang. Um, let's see what going down the other side's like. <laughs> bit of a rock appreciation as well. Ah, all right, I'm trying to film and there's too many flies. <laughs> They're all uh, like moisture bees or flies or something. Hang on. Ah, go away. Just smashing myself. All right, that gives me about 10 seconds. <laughs> anyway, welcome to a riverbed. I've pretty much given up getting to Opuwo uh, tonight. It's uh, a beautiful drive. I mean, really, really lovely. And 90% of the road is, yeah, quite new gravel, similar to uh, a few of the other roads that have changed around here. But uh, <laughs> there's a couple of big mountain passes. Uh, one of them, you know, low range, diff lock, two uh, second gear, you know, to really smash up it. The other one is just a long climb and increasingly you started to, <laughs> to fall over. So yeah, it's just sort of deceiving. You think you could take like a little normal car along some of the road and all of a sudden, oh no, here's a big massive, uh, <laughs> here's a big massive mountain. Uh, yeah, so it's just surprising. You spend all the money upgrading the road, you even put signs on it. I mean, the signs are kind of hilarious. And it's nice. It's good to see Namibia progressing. Uh, but it's just completely strange to leave a huge rock mountain with a almost impassable um, <laughs> thing you have to drive over. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting buzzed with flies. Uh, anyway, so um, I'm just sort of copying footage. Uh, I've run out of SD card space again. And uh, I'm recording in 4K, which takes up a lot of space. And as I said before, I didn't bring enough cards. What a beautiful tree. It's what I call a lightning tree. I don't know if it's died or if it's hit by lightning and it's still standing or it's been burnt or something, but uh, oh, the colors are lovely. Yeah, so these are moisture bees which are attacking me. They're just landing. 
they don't sting, they're just after my sweat basically, so they're all over my neck, all over the camera for some reason, they're interested in photography it seems. Uh, let's go for a walk, it might keep the flies off. Found this big tree on this riverbed, and uh, oh, it's a little bit better, they don't quite instantly follow you. Yes, I just had some lunch, uh, tuna on cracker, and uh, just waiting for the cards to copy. So I think what I have to do tonight is push camp somewhere and hit a polo sort of earlier in the morning and try and get everything I want to do. I want to just see the mechanic about that I've got a bit of play in the steering. I don't think there's much you can do but replace the parts. Supermarket diesel and I need to check on, I had some parts sent from the UK um, because where I stored my vehicle they killed my alternator it seems. I have a new one coming. Anyway, there's a riverbed <laughs> update. <laughs> so let's see. But as I said, beautiful road, uh, nice mountain, some great rock appreciation. And uh, let's uh, continue and see where we end up. All right, that's enough. Too many flies. <laughs> so I've just left the, uh, the riverbed of moisture bees, which was a bit of a nightmare. I desperately needed to just organize some things, have a good check of the coolant level and uh, no leaks from the hoses so far so I'm happy with that um, and co copy some SD cards and so forth but oh my goodness there's a thousand moisture bees <laughs> can't be much fun being one of them they're just committing suicide left right and center they land on your head I had even I had my hat on they made holes uh, they, they went through the small holes in the hat uh, I must have killed at least a hundred <laughs> which wasn't much fun but I was determined to just sort it out all those things and uh, that way I can sort of relax and enjoy the drive a little bit more. Temperature's good, it's still sort of 92, 94, uh, it's, yeah probably 40 degrees or so, bad road, traction's not good, carrying a lot of weight so that's about normal, happy with that. Anyway, uh, should I ever believe in reincarnation? Uh, I certainly won't be coming back as a moisture bee because that seems a very poor life. <laughs> We had a sign back there saying for five kilometers we go up and down. <laughs> oh, certainly right about the up so far. This is actually a, I think it's a D road, yes. This is actually a proper road in Namibia. That's oh, pretty good obviously they've done a lot of work with the grader here. You can see how high the rocks are either side. Fast and you do more damage if there's a big rock or something uh, or on your tires. I just uh, inspected my tires at lunchtime there. <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, one in particular is pretty much cut to, cut to ribbons. But yeah, well done to the grader for getting up here by the way. That's a pretty uh, heroic effort. Namibian uh, graders are pretty cool. They, they tow a big sort of caravan which is in the same make and model of the grader it looks you know sort of yellow and uh, and white uh, often with wife maybe a few kids and they uh, they just sort of grade you know pull the caravan drop it off go and grade some of the road come back at night live in the caravan pull the caravan to the next place grade you know they're not uh, <laughs> Not maybe a sought after lifestyle, but just interesting. So it's a fair old chunk of land, and wow, that is a beautiful valley at the end there. You just, it's more rock appreciation, I'm afraid, but uh, that is uh, just a beautiful scene, actually. I was, uh, <laughs> I was told this road was better. I've, I've taken the one over the, the north, this is sort of the southern route, and I've taken the north one before. I did it in uh, November, October, and uh, first half is perfectly fine gravel, and then it sort of crawls to a halt. It's quite slow, and you know, it's just a sandy track and things like that. It was fine, but it's short. It's you know it's about half the distance of this one, so I reckon it would be about the same length and time. Now, uh, the guy telling me this wanted a ride. A little way on this route but he was saying the northern route was sort of washed out which I can kind of believe having done it 
this was a more predictable route even though it's uh, uh, quite a bit longer anyway I must say beautiful beautiful uh, road it is though there's a lot of stunning scenery it's like the Swiss Alps of Namibia up ahead doing tipping into the river <laughs> ah look at that beautiful beautiful piece of rock up there we better get a picture of it eh? ready one two three snap and on 90 oh 90 is too much 35 35 is pretty good let's do a zoom then oh that's a nice piece of Cliff Rock. Beautiful. What a photographer. All right, onwards and upwards. Let's see what else is going to kill us. I apologize again for the wobbly jello nature of this camera. I couldn't review the footage each night, so I didn't know at this stage that it wasn't great. I'd believed the marketing hype from the camera manufacturers, so assumed I was capturing award-winning footage here. Sorry. Soon I used a different suction cup mounting, and this footage improves a lot. The plastic protection I'd added to the windscreen also caused this weird colour effect, which wasn't obvious at first. But I also managed to solve this later on by using a different filter on the camera. Pretty little bit of road with marble lining each side and some darker rock there. Looking particularly vicious and nasty. Looks like they like eating tyres. On the plus side, the research put into finding a specialist microphone to record audio in the noisy cab was working really well. It really shut out the engine and wind noise and did a great job of capturing my desert deluded ramblings with great clarity considering the conditions. Slow going, it's slow going. And I'm slowly going out of my mind. Slowly going out of my mind I'm slowly going out of my mind All right, maybe we're coming out into some sort of valley soon, that would be nice Bit sick, bit sick of up and down windy windy The open valley was quite stunning in places and it really opened up to a little surprise that every wary desert traveller appreciates Okay, well, a fairly interesting development <laughs> is uh, it's a beautiful river and it's got water in it and I have to cross it at least two more times according to the map. <laughs> so, uh, let's enjoy the scenery and then go and see what the crossing's like. It's not too, it's not too deep. Just depends where the actual road crossing is. I mean, it's quite pretty. You know, with palm trees and that down there, it looks lovely. All right, well, let's go and see uh, how the landing's going to get on. Okay, well, you can join in the surprise of the river crossing. Have we got a nice concrete bottomed <laughs> river crossing? Oh, that's not looking good, eh? No, we just got a big pool of mud. There's no going crossing there. Yep. <laughs> ah, bollocks. Oh well. 
with my previous river crossing experience still very fresh in my mind and keen not to repeat the drama given the likelihood of more flash flooding, I thought it prudent to retreat back and check out the signpost I'd seen for a campsite a kilometre back in case it was a nice place where I could relax and enjoy a river swim. Uh, so let's go and see if they're actually open, if there's anyone here or if it's in the riverbed and therefore it's underwater like everything else. Oh, this looks lovely. Uh, a bit disturbing about the water. It was a nice little place, but it had clearly been underwater a few days earlier given the dampness of the mud in large places, and I wasn't keen to tempt fate, as we'd seen earlier what can happen if you're anywhere near a riverbed when a flash flood arrives in this area. Plus, this is where the killer butterflies live. So that sealed the deal. Let's see if we can find another way across the river. Thanks for jumping in the passenger seat this morning. I really hope you've enjoyed the journey so far, and I look forward to seeing you in the next part of the adventure as we continue life on the wet, rocky road to civilization. Stop pulling the dice and just compromise It's the chance of your life